Blog Talk Radio. My name's Tom Mark Wassell, President Jay on loan from God for the next two hours to walk you through this crazy world of sports. And hey, happy race day here in Indianapolis, high atop the Balance Studios, the west suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana, just a few short miles from 16th in Georgetown, which is the, where the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is located. And there is a race going on today. And that is the road course is all set up and ready to go. Got to say a uh, brand new uh, full setter. We'll get into that uh, as well as the IndyCar Grand Prix uh, prepares to get going this afternoon. And so we're going to spend most of the show today talking about IndyCar. Do a little NASCAR update, a little NBA update before we send you on your way. And then I'll be headed on down to the track. Matthew and our official. IndyCar contributor standing by in the balance green room. And uh, 917-889-8516 is our digits. We're going to be just breaking down uh, by the cars. We're going to be breaking down the qualification. We're breaking down all the storylines of the Grand Prix. Obviously, storylines also how they might connect uh, to the Indianapolis 500. We don't want to leave that in right field as well. And then Steve Wilson, Speedway Digest, going to join us at the top of the next hour uh, to help us continue to break down some IndyCar NASCAR action at the bottom of the hour. We'll take you home with some NBA. My name is Tom Marquis, El Presidente, 917 8516 is the digits. We'll be right back right here on the Balance Radio Network. The Air National Guard is a reserve component of the United States Air Force and serves alongside active duty Air Force members in times of a national crisis. In addition, the Air Guard serves the state and local community in a wide range of capacities. The reason people join the Air Guard is as diverse as our members and includes such reasons as a deep desire to serve their country, money for college, travel, new job skills, and the pride that goes along with belonging to the greatest military organization in the world. I joined because I felt a calling to serve my country, but I didn't want to be far away from my family, so the Indiana Air National Guard was a perfect fit for me. With over 95 different career opportunities to choose from and 100% paid college tuition to any state-funded college, why not give us a call? Call 1-800-841-3103 or visit online at goang.com to find out more. Again, that's 1-800-841-3103. The Air National Guard, guarding America, defending freedom. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant eland, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. Feed the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. 
Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Porklet, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? I'm not even upset about anything. All right, and welcome back to The Balance. It is race day here in Indianapolis, west suburbs of Indianapolis. And uh, we've got us a race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway helping us during, and joining us now to help us kick things off and unpack everything for today's action. Matthew Embry, WSBT up in South Bend, our official IndyCar contributor. How is you, sir? Uh, still waking up, uh, but eager to race. So hopefully I don't cause too much of a trouble getting down to, to Indianapolis next weekend when I have to be up by 4 a.m. so I can get down there by 8 a.m. for the morning warm-up session. I tell you what, it's exciting. I mean, it, it, you know, it, it's it just so much fun to kind of watch how the marvel of this track is. And every year, you know, we go there every year. We do this whole thing every year. But, you know, as I come across the media lot there, across uh, 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 Georgetown there, uh, and, I, and I go into the media gate and I walk down to the tunnel, there's always that very first stop in awe. It's like the first time, even though I've been going for decades, it's like it's always the first time is like the first time. And to walk underneath that tunnel, if you're lucky enough to get there when there's cars on the track, gives you goosebumps. The Indianapolis Motor Speedway is a special track. And they, they have something unique at Indianapolis that probably I would say, if not the only very close to the only uh track in the world that does this and that's to be well, daytona of course obviously i'm speaking more of, of indycar and international known type races uh but that is able to take their road course and convert it into an oval and vice versa obviously we used to have the formula one here uh we don't have that anymore so that's where that track was designed and developed for was the road course but, Matthew, nobody knows Indianapolis Motor Speedway better than you. Walk us through the road course today. Well, obviously, it's a tougher layout. It's a basic layout. I try to encourage more overtake, et cetera. Obviously, the tight uh, turn one and two complexes has seen many a wreck on the opening lap. It'll be interesting to see how that affects things and ultimately affects the race uh, this afternoon. We get it going at 3.30. And then, obviously, uh, down the straightaway, Holman Boulevard, there's a good chance to pass there, and then there's a good chance to turn into when you get to the snake pit uh, just before the end of the lap. So at least three good places where you could overtake and gain ground, but uh, getting the restarts right and then the in and out laps, I think are going to have a lot to say about uh, who wins this race. And uh, could be uh, we could see a first-time winner, uh, certainly, and I think there's a good chance in it in uh, Sweden's Felix Rosenquist. Well, yeah, I tell you what, what a special uh, 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 
honor that is for Chip Ganassi. And then, of course, back-to-back and P1 and P2 is, uh, is Rosenfest and uh, Dixon. And, uh, you know, rookie, first time he's ever gotten a pole, first time he's ever been at Indianapolis. And to get a pole there, that's no easy task. And and how the, the road courses are set up, it's, it is hard to pass. And, you know, Will Power said in, a, in the presser yesterday, he was just like, you know, everybody's so good these days. People don't make the mistakes that they used to make, and the chances are far more likely today we'll see an all-green race than what we would have seen just a couple years ago. Uh, So he's like, you know, people are locked in, and they know what they're doing. So you have to take advantage of those opportunities uh, when they arrive. We saw in practice and uh, yesterday uh, that Scott Dixon found the grass a little bit. And you may have seen the, uh, uh, the tweet that uh, Chip Canassi sent out that said, sorry about the lawn guys. Uh, so that's going to happen. But one of the things is talk a little bit about uh, our, our pole setter, our rookie from Sweden. Um, here's the thing. He's a very good driver, but Chip Canassi's on record to saying we just got to get him to stop tearing up race cars and he's good so the thing about it is it's a lot easier to try to get them to slow them down a little bit slow it down we know you can get the job done you don't have anything to prove to us help us get to know our rookie from sweden i don't know if you necessarily could say he's teared up race cars i mean he's got three top 10 finishes in the first four races i'd say he's doing his job very well and probably better so than ed jones did well, last you gotta, year you got i mean you got to rem- you got to remember, Matt, in, in in testing and in practice and in uh, other tracks, he has hit the wall. He has had wrecks. He has had his issues on the track. And that and that again, that comment came from Chip Ganassi, which is the team owner. But go ahead. But sometimes, as we know, Chip Ganassi can sometimes overstate things a little bit. And <laughs> very true. I think that's a Touché. rush of hyperbole on that. Uh, Let's, for instance, compare what he has done in the first four races with Ganassi to, say, the guy that was there uh, last year. If I could find his information here, where is he? Ed Jones. I'll work on that here for a second. But while I'm at it, uh, he hasn't put a wheel wrong all year. I think uh, a couple missteps where, you know, etiquette as far as, you know, the in and out laps and then, you know, racing strategy and catching the yellows right, I think has been his biggest issue. I mean, he did have a little bit of an issue in Austin, but again, that was a new track for everybody. But let's take a look at it. The facts of the matter are simple. His results, 4th, 23rd, 10th, 10th. Compare that to Ed Jones last year in his first four races. 8th, 20th, third, 20th, and two of those being DNFs. Felix Rosenvist hasn't had a DNF already th- yet this season. I'd say big improvement so far this year. Oh, no, I, I totally agree with you. I, I I like him. I enjoyed talking with him yesterday at the press. I enjoyed uh, seeing his energy when he uh, uh, when he uh, won the poll, and I'm happy for him and Chip, Chip Canassi. You know, you talked a little bit about um, – uh, Jack Harvey. Let, let's talk a little bit about where he's at. He's in in, in P3. Uh, he is. He's not with Sam Schmidt anymore, is he? he uh, he's I, with the satellite team Meyer Shank, which is that's what I thought. That's what I, that's what I put in my article yesterday, but I didn't have all my notes up here. From so that's my storyline with Jack Harvey. As I put in my article on Speedway Digest yesterday, uh, the other storylines, which we'll get into in a minute, here is Jack Harvey and Colt. And Colton Herta, obviously, Colton Herta, the Indy Lights uh, sensation from last year. Uh, but Jack Harvey is an unproven entity. What a better audience. I mean, and you got to look. I mean, I, I, I applaud NBC for what they're doing as far as uh, the the pairing up with other sporting events, the, the advertising that they're doing. And they've got a huge coverage there at the track. Uh, I was there. I've been there all weekend. Uh, NBC is everywhere you go. Their signage is there everywhere you go. NBC is there. And this is the first um, a live network uh, race of the season, if you will. Big network, a uh, big boy network, if you will. And, you know, you might – we might kid ourselves and say there might be 2 million people watching, but there's at least probably going to be a million people watching. I'm not counting who's going to be at the, at the track. And, and so uh, 
Doug Bowles yesterday in the leadership uh, press conference talked about how attendance is up, how ticket sales are up. Are they where they want them to be? No, but they're up, and they're uh, certainly not to the magnitude where they were, where were the first GP, but the, the, the first one is always not necessarily your stabilizer. It's Everybody's excited to see what this is going to be about. We haven't had, we hadn't had uh, racing on the road course for for a few years. Now we bring back a, another race in the month of May. So a lot of the excitement was there, but the the, the ticket prices are, I mean, the the, tic, the ticket sales are up. Uh, the 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 uh, 